Hey everyone, it's Laz again. Not the full episode, number four, not yet. We're working on it, taking a look at the topics that I really want to put in there to help you out with your 16-800-125. And that's exactly what all of you need to be focused on is that particular certification, all right? So with that said, uh, this little video, all right, it's going to be your Ether channel, all right? Why would you use Ether channel? Uh, how would you configure it? Basic general stuff. Very doubtful you'll configure either channel. You may get a print screen, you may get some multiple choice questions, you may get a drag and drop, I don't know. Alright, but you're definitely not gonna be configuring either channel, but hey, I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you. Yes, this is a blank packet tracer, but we're gonna go ahead and put things from scratch, right? We'll build the network from scratch so you can do the same thing at home. So let's go ahead and do that. So first I'm gonna go ahead and take out two PCs. Alright. And then we get my switches, they're gonna be 2960. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is the CCNA. It's layer two switching. Layer two switching, not layer three. Okay? Not layer three. Once you get to your CCMP and above, you'll get, you know, or you get to the next CCNA, which is February 24th, 2020. So hurry the hell up and get certified, okay? Uh yeah. Then you better worry about layer three switches and all that. All right, we're gonna get a plug in our PC2 here. We'll put it on port 20. And again, you know, people ask me, what are you plugging things into? Are these supposed to be plugging into the port? I'm plugging into whatever port I feel like. All right, not to be you know, a jerk or anything, just so I know visually what I need to do. So if it's port 24, I know port 24 is gonna be my switch. All right, uh, connected to my F00, G00 whatever zero on my router it's your network do what you want so you can visually already recognize what is it that you're looking at that's why in the router descriptions you know, on the end of the switch it's very it's nice to have to know where you're connecting through all right so we're gonna get the lightning bolt here when you use the lightning bolt it's gonna use the correct cable that you will need and it's only gonna pick the first of the little port as you can see f01 so the next one will be f02 and then S03. Now, for whatever reason, I find myself using this fast forward in time button, looking back to the future, all right, in order to get things moving along a little bit quicker. If not, I'll be sitting there forever. So let's put in IP addresses. I wouldn't have any layer three information, so we're not routing or anything like that. So we're in the same network, 192.168.1.1. Tap, tap. Easy, right? I go to desktop, boom, I go 192.168.1.2, tap tab, i right, using the default mask, and we can ping right now if we wanted to, I mean, it's not that we can ping, ping 192.168.1.2, and we can ping, you're not going to see it going, you know, it wants to do either channel going 100 miles or 300 megabits per second, because that's the whole point of the channel, the whole point of either channel is for you to aggregate bring these three links because you see on the left on switch number three you have two amber ports which you're not going to have all right and in the right in the uh, ccna certification you're not going to have ports being lit up and stuff like that you're just going to have bridge ids what is that it's a priority number and it's a mac address all right that creates the bridge id which is for the span tree because that's span tree that's doing that so what you're doing when you're aggregating the ports, not only are you bringing it into one port channel, all right, where all the information is going through to increase your bandwidth to 300 megabits per second, but you're also tricking spanning tree. Hey, this is one port, okay? So if you look at it, this is the switch that is choosing to block the port on, you'll see it, all right? And I'm sure in your test, you'll be able, let's give it a name, so we know where we're at. This is, what, what is it? Switch three. Okay. Conf T. Host name. SW. It's putting caps. Not screaming. Yes. I can't see it. All right. Do WR. You can't do the do. You cannot do the do in your certification. You have to go back to privilege mode and do copy, run, start, enter, enter. Why twice? Because you got to save it to the start of the configuration file, right? That's where you save stuff to. So, uh, anyway. I don't need to be there. I just need to put the whole thing. I'm going to go ahead and do a, um, what was I looking for? 
Okay, the uh, the ports. There you go. Shows pantry. Shows pantry. Ah. Shows panning. Tab. There we go. Good last. All right. As you can see, we have two block ports. All right. Ports two and three. What we're gonna do is we're gonna aggregate these three ports. We're gonna create ether channel. We're gonna we're gonna create a port channel, and we're gonna include these interfaces in that port channel. These will be trunk channel, trunk ports. Channel is trunk and the ports are trunk. Now, once we get into that, I will put the type of channel group that we want to use. There's some mode that you can choose. It's active, passive, active, active, auto, reliable, just on. All right, you got to know the differences between each. All right, so that is what we need to understand. So these are the ports. This is, so this is not the bridge. All right, this is, doesn't say in the board, would say it right here because this information right here is about the root bridge. So this guy has a lower MAC address than this guy. So he, that's why he became the root bridge because all switches have that by default. All right, so let's go ahead and configure either channel and we'll start right here. Let's go ahead and open this guy up. All right, I'm gonna do config T. First, the port channel, int, port channel okay how many port channel port channel one all right then we trunk it switch port uh switch port mode trunk okay that's what the t stands for trunk i abbreviate a lot yes i do all right then we go into the range of the ports which ports are going to participate in this port channel one okay so we're going to go int range f zero slash one dash three Enter. I right, trunk them. Switch port mode. All right, trunk there. Okay, so they're trunk. But now we gotta say channel hyphen group. Okay, one. That's the channel we created. Four channel we created. Channel group one. Mode. Ta-da! This. This is what you need to know. Active, lag P. Auto, tag P. Desirable, tag P. On, it's just on. Okay? If it's on one side, it's on the other. Passive, passive. So, if you want lag P, you can say, okay, I just want to make it active. It says unconditional. You want lag P. All right? If it's passive, well, hey, listen, you know, if you detect some other device out there that's really not P, can you please be lag P? Yes, thank you so much. All right, we're not going to do that. We're going to do active, active. You both are going to be likely. All right, or we can do auto, um, prime and auto. We can do desirable, desirable, and then they'll both be likely. But again, one will be Cisco proprietary, but the other one will be uh, cross vendors. All right, cross vendors, likely, cross vendors, likely, Cisco. All right, so we're going to do active on both. Active. And now I'm going to put it here because you can actually put allowed VLANs. You can allow certain VLANs to go through and not other VLANs. I let all the VLANs go through. I mean, the whole point, this is your backbone. This is your backbone that you're creating, right? This is your, where you're aggregating these, these links is where information is going down through floor. So think of this as the second floor to the first floor and you want to send information and you're still running UTP uh, Cat5 cabling and you have 300 nodes per floor. And you have data going down the wire, you need more bandwidth. So guess what? Aggregate the line. Aggregate the line. Alright, so we got that going. I'm gonna do, do I'm gonna do a WR. All right, and one of the things you want to look at is show ether channel summary. You can see it says S down. It's down. And it should it, it will be down because the other side's not up. So let's get the other side going. DLI. To enable let's see the security name. Let's switch for post name. Let's w4. Awesome. And we're gonna do int port channel uno trunk it switch port mode trunk. Okay, and then we go int range f0 slash one through three switch port mode trunk. And then we do channel hyphen G group because right? it's an account. That's why I have to type all the way to G before I get that. 
uh, one, and then mode is active. Boom. Okay, and look what it says right here. Four channel is up. All right, so what do we do? Let's control Z. Let me do a WR. I'm gonna do a copy and start. All right, uh, you do that in the test. Uh, I'm gonna do a show ether channel. Oh, summary. Sorry. Summary. All right, and you can see SU. It says SU. Uh, S. Honestly, where's the first little capital? It's always missed that. There it is. It's layer two. Okay. And it's in use. It's up. It's up. It's working. Okay. And now it'll tell you it's down. Well, this one said it was down. Oh, it changed state to up. Ah, oh, because the other one. That is why. Okay. So if we look at show spanning tree, show spanning tree. You can see that the port channel is the one that has the lower cost. You see that? Why? Because you aggregated it. You have 300 megabits per second. That's why the cost is going to be lower, and that's going to be a root port. It's going to be a root port. This doesn't say this is a root bridge. Does it say that this is the root bridge? Let's take a look at Show's Pantry here. Show's Pantry. Hey, this says this is the root bridge. Why? Because it has a lower cost. Well, at the same time, it also has a little magnet. Well, you can see here it has this. Thing. Well, this is the root bridge magnet rest. It is 0005. Okay, but it's really because of the lower cost. Because if you were to put gigabit, if I would have, let's say, two megs, and I would, uh, it usually makes, it blocks the higher port numbers. All right, but if you have bandwidth, SDP will make a decision based on bandwidth. So you will never block a gigabit port because it has a cost of four. Fast Ethernet has a cost of 19. So if we aggregate our links, all right, and we have 300 megabits per second, definitely that's gonna have a lower cost. Definitely that's gonna have a lower cost. So that's what you wanna look at. And also the type right here. This lets you know that that's an ether channel port. And that's an ether channel port. Now right there so that's what you look at and really that's it what i showed you let me fast forward through time so they turn green there you go okay so now they're all green and you're gonna see you're not gonna ping any different all right it's gonna go the same speed you're not gonna notice any difference but the bottom line is that you can do a show ethernet channel show ethernet channel summary i should say show ethernet channel summary and it'll tell you pay attention to that sd or su all right s meaning layer two Okay, well, let's just look at it one more time so we can see. It's show ether channel summary. And we're looking and let's bring this down a little bit so we can see more of it. D means down. So it was SD before. It was SD before, but now it's SU, which is in use. And S is layer 2. Capital S is layer 2. If it would be a layer 3, we have an R. Okay, but it's not, it's an S. So, and you pay attention obviously to the, to the protocol and to the ports that are involved in either channel. So show Ethernet, show Ethernet channel summary is the command you need to be aware of. And they're asking you what protocol are you using to negotiate across the Ether channel. Well, there you go, you're using LAC. And that means you can go across that. It's not specific just to Cisco. That is your either channel. That's it. Is this? Don't think more into it. Don't think more into it. That is a kind of questioning that there are line of questioning that you may encounter. If they make you configure, well, there you go. Replicate this two, three, four, or five times. We do it over and over again. You'll be good to go. All right. But I got a boot camp coming up on uh, the 17th and the 18th. Go to globet.net. And check it out because I have a boot camp. It's gonna be for six hours on Saturday, six hours on Sunday, all right, on specific uh, topics. It's not the whole ICMD1 and ICMD2. You know how to read. I'm not gonna tell you the OSI model, so it's gonna teach you the model and all that. But you need to know your routing protocols and how to configure them and certain things within the routing protocols. You need to know about uh, layer two, okay? You need to know about HSRP. You need to know about NAP, which are simple. All right, HSRP, redundancy protocols, all these different things, specific topics that we can go over. Okay, so 
If you're looking for it, all, uh, two days, August 17th and August 18th, just go to Globet.net. Go to Globet.net. It'll show you there uh, the times, okay? It's, I know it's the 17th and the 18th, Saturday and Sunday. Well, go to Globet.net so you can look at the time. But that's it. That's it for Ether Chat, okay? Real world, hey man, whatever else you do in the real world, that's a different story, but you need that piece of paper. So pay attention to this lab and do it over and over and over again until you get it. I'll see you in the boot camp, hopefully, but if not, in the next episode.